What a joy to be back in Times Square Church, a church for all nations. You know, uh, some of you are too young to know this, but 36 years ago when our founder, Pastor David Wilkerson, received the vision from the Lord that he, that he fulfilled uh, to come to New York City, to come right here in Manhattan, 51st and Broadway, to Crossroads, and, and Times Square, Crossroads of the World, and to plant and establish a church. It was, on, it was on the marquee for years, a church for all nations. And over the years, we saw God do the miraculous work of uh, um, uh, bringing people from all the nations right here uh, in this building. Uh, through the years, there's been people, Christian people have accepted the Lord and joined the church from over 100 nations. So the church from all nations. And, and God fulfilling the vision. And God deepening division and enlarging uh, division, uh, Times Square Church is now not only a church for all nations, but through the ministry online, it is a church to all nations. You understand? Every Sunday, every Sunday when Pastor Tim starts to name the names of the, all the countries that are watching, 30, 40 p uh, countries uh, every Sunday, people from all over the world are watching, are connecting with Times Square Church, are saying Times Square Church is a church where I'm being fed, where I'm, being, I'm, I'm hearing from the Lord, where God is ministering to me. So can we hear uh, today, 51st and Broadway, can we uh, welcome our online community? Can we just, can you give them a shout? Give them a shout of welcome. Come on. Welcome. You're watching online. Welcome. The message uh, the Lord put on my heart today is overcoming through pressure and persecution. Overcoming through pressure and uh, persecution. The uh, sociologists have coined an acronym that is now uh, known worldwide to describe the society in which we are, the ethos of the society in which we are. And it's, uh, it, it, they call it a, a it's used uh, all over the world. Uh, uh, we live in a VUCA world, V-U-C-A. And it speaks of, of the, our world, uh, of the volatility and uncertainty and complexity and ambiguity. That we live in a VUCA world, that we are called to be God's church, to be the church of Jesus Christ, to be God's people on earth. In these last of the last days, uh, and we will be serving and we will be uh, shining for Christ in a VUCA world, the world of, of, of volatility. Uh, so it's the, all over the world, um, when, you, when you think of fr from Gaza to Ukraine, uh, to the politics in the U.S., to the um, global economy, rapid and explosive changes that no one saw coming. It is indeed a volatile world. Uh, a world, uh, a VUCA world of uh, uncertainty. Uh, we live in this uh, world of, of uncertainty where, where this, the unpredictability, nobody could have, uh, uh, of events and issues, nobody could have uh, predicted the uh, COVID pandemic or, or predicted the, the war from, in Russia and Ukraine and, do, and even in the uh, last weeks what is happening in Gaza and in Israel and, and throughout the Middle East. It's a world of, of uh, volatility and uh, uh, uncertainty and then certainly a world of complexity. Uh, uh, endless interactive forces and issues making cause and effects uh, relationships unclear. It is so, it is very, it is complex and also ambiguity. We live in a world that, that is uh, unclear realities and potential of misunderstanding stemming from a constant barrage of mixed messages. What is true news? What is uh, fake news? What is real? What is not? And, and we, will, we will be serving God uh, in, these, uh, in this generation in a VUCA world. And the scripture teaches us that in the VUCA world of the last days, of the end times, the church of Jesus Christ will have to learn how to overcome through pressures and persecution. And we look in a, so we'll look today in Acts chapter 4 at the first persecution of the church. We'll look at Acts chapter 4, and we'll read the first four verses. Acts chapter 4, verse 1. Now, as they spoke to the people, the priests and captains of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed, and they taught the people and preached preach in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. However, would you say out loud, however? 
However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. This is Acts chapter 4. It's the first persecution of the Christian church. They laid hands on them and threw them in jail. They severely threatened them. They commanded and ordered them not to speak or to teach uh, the resurrection, to teach the name of Jesus. This is the first uh, persecution since Pentecost. Act, Acts chapter 1, the, the uh, resurrected Christ, the ascension, and Jesus says go uh, and wait for the promise of the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2. And at Pentecost, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that cloven tongues of fire sat upon each of them. And, and, and now the fire is in their hearts. They, they are, they're walking in the, in, in the miraculous because in Acts chapter 3, just before, there's a miraculous healing of a man who had been paralyzed from birth for over 40 years. And please understand that that is how the kingdom of God has been moving on the earth. It is always favor and breakthrough, but always with fierce battles. Prayer, uh, progress always brings persecution. The great commission, go into all the world and make disciples. The great commission has always been fulfilled through in intense confrontation. Now most historians point to ten waves of persecution that started with Caesar Nero in about 67 AD until the emperor Diocletian in 303 AD. Wave after wave, from Acts 4, wave for 300 years, wave after wave of insane and barbaric persecution. Where Christians were beaten, they were scourged, they were tortured, they were beheaded, they were devoured in the Colosseum of Rome. They're covered in burning wax and burned to death as living torches, living candles, the story speak of, of, of Christians being burned alive uh, as living candles in the gardens of the Caesars during parties and decadent orgies. There's, there's a historians that name specifically dates and specific location where a thousand Christians at a time were thrown into burning furnaces. Now this persecution is at the hands of the Sadducees. Now, in the Gospels, the primary enemy of Christ was the Pharisees, the religious Pharisees. Now in Acts 4.1, it tells us that the Sadducees came upon them. The Sadducees were the ruling class who controlled all that went on. They were mixing the religious with the political. They were the ferocious defenders of Rome and its multiplicity of gods. They were corrupt and they were immoral and they were violent. Theologically or philosophically, they were the hyper-liberals of their day. They, they did not believe in the supernatural or in uh, miracles or uh, in even hope. No belief, you know, they, they fought any belief in hope or judgment in the afterlife. They despised and wanted uh, to uh, eradicate the teaching that, that, that men had to answer to God for their life after their death. And above all, they obsessively and violently oppose any belief in the resurrection. So by all means possible, they endeavored to impose a cancel culture of absolute intolerance and elimination of any Bible belief, conviction, uh, life principles, worldview, uh, faith cont contrary to their one world globalist agenda with a fury to crush and to obliterate the Christian church from the face of the earth. But verse 4 says, however. How many of you are grateful for the however? The howevers of God. Say to the person next to you, thank God there's an however. Some of you have not smiled in six minutes. Verse 4, however. Many of those that heard the word believe, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. How many of you here have believed? Oh, I, 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 in, the first, in the first service we had an explosion. Here we had golf clap. I'm going to ask again, how many of you have believed? Aha. The however of God, I want, I, want to, I want to shout it out. No one, no one will ever stop the kingdom of God from advancing. The gospel of Christ will always overcome. Say yes, please. <laughs> Historians estimate that at this point, 
There was 20 to 25,000 passionate believers in Acts chapter 4 in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, they were announcing and proclaiming the person, the, the proof of his power, the, the grace of God to, to, see, to save and to heal and to deliver, and the abundant and eternal life that he offered to all. They filled and swept through Jerusalem with their message and of resurrection, profoundly confronting the, their ideology and immorality and hedonist, hedonistic and decadent lifestyles. And please understand that the confrontation was much more than uh, ideological, social, or, or cultural. It was deeply spiritual. It was then and it is now. We need an important understanding of the original Greek. When we read verse 2, we read they were, that the Sadducees were greatly distur disturbed that they preached Christ. Uh, and this, this expression in the Greek, diapo neome, in the Greek means it's so intense. It means attacked, a sentiment of repulsion, of deep resentment and caused by opposition. Do you know where the, this word is used? The, the only other place it is used in the book of Acts, it's in Acts chapter 16, verse 18. I'm going to read it for you. Where there's a slave girl who's used and abused by, for a sordid gain by her masters, and she, uh, she's possessed by a demon spirit, a demonic spirit, and she's following Paul and Silas, shouting at them. And then the apostle Paul turned around, same expression, greatly disturbed in his spirit. It was a spiritual thing. The aponeome turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Christ to come out of her. Please understand. When, we, when you are, and when we're thinking, and we're talking about persecution and pressure against, against Christians, it is beyond logic, it is beyond argument, it is beyond ideological. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers and, and wickedness in high places. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God. It is a spirit. You are involved in a spiritual a battle. The weapons of our warfare are not human and carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. This is something not only for preachers on stage. This is for you every day of your life. When we th th think of, of persecution or pressure, we have to understand it is a spiritual battle. And please understand that, that Times Square Church, this is how this church was birthed, blessed, multiplied, protected, and has overcome in one of the darkest city in the world spiritually. And that is how and who we must fight and battle until Jesus come. It is not by might. It is not by power. It is not by technology. It is by the Spirit of the Lord. Somebody should say yes. So please listen to this truth we need to be reminded of in our own life. Well, through grief and battles and what you are going through and opposition or hurt or injustices or pressures and even persecution, it is a spiritual battle you're in. And the, every day, you, you must, we must walk every day with that sense that the one, that faith, that confidence as we sang, that the one that is in us is greater than the one that is attacking us. That, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, when the enemy comes in like a flood, and some of you online and in person, you, that expression means something very precise to you right now. The, the enemy has come in like a flood in an area of your life. It's come in like a, to overwhelm you. The expression means when, when, when the enemy has come in like uh, to the point of over, uh, overwhelming you, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against it. Please give him praise for every day. Now, pressure and persecution are inevitable, according to Jesus, and to the teachings of Paul, Paul the Apostle and his mentoring of the early church. John chapter 15, Jesus will say, these things I command you, that you love one another. And if you love one another real good, well, then the whole world is going to love you. No, that's not what it says. Some of you were checking me out in, their, in your Bibles. Now all these things I command you that you love one another. And if the world hates you, this is Jesus speaking, you know that it hated me before it hated you. It is beyond reasoning. Remember the, world, the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, says Jesus, they will also persecute you. 
But then, if they kept my word, then they will keep yours also. So this is happening. This is being fulfilled. Both are happening. Those, both, those two, two currents are happening of opposition and pressure and persecution, but also a proclamation where men and women every day are receiving the word of God and their lives are being transformed. Both are happening in, in real time, simultaneously, and increasingly and exponentially uh, around the world in these last days and around you in these last of the last days. Yeah, you have pressure, but great proclamation. You have, you have persecution that are intended to bring fear, but there is a people that are steady, steadfast to keep the word of God. We are standing steadfast to keep the word of God. <laughs> Jesus said but this, John 15, 25, but this happened to the word, uh, that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But the, when the Helper comes, the Holy Spirit, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. This is the work of the Spirit in us and through us. And you also will bear witness because you've been with me from the beginning. So this is happening uh, in us and around us. That there's hatred without a cause. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit fills us with, uh, fills us with courage. And the Comforter still conquers. And the injustices against Christians will never stop. But the impact and the influence and the uh, inspiration and then the, the divine invitation in us, through us, of Christ to reach multitudes one at a time can never be stopped. That's the Holy Spirit in us bearing witness. So Paul speaks of his ministry and he says, this is how I serve the Lord in 2 Timothy 3. With persecutions and afflictions which happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. And, and in the Greek, uh, in the next sentence, is really a, an exclamation where he says, Oh, what persecution uh, uh, I, I have endured. And out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Oh, yes, there will be pressure and persecution, but the Lord will deliver us out of them all. Say yes, please. So he says, Yes. And all who desires to, lead, to live godly in Christ Jesus. How many of you here and online, how many of you here say, I desire, that is my desire to live godly in Christ Jesus. Say yes. Here's a promise for you. And all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Much quieter in the second part, right, of the... But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. This is the world in which we will serve God. We will see this prophetic eschatological amplification being fulfilled exponentially until the imminent return of Christ. One, one analogy that Jesus gives is that this, this, will be, this will be fulfilled like the birth pains, like a, a woman giving birth. That will, they will increase, it will increase, these signs will increase uh, in frequency like, like uh, the birth pains. Uh, in frequency and in intensity. Increased persecution, but at the same time, more and more powerful proclamation. Growing rejection, but global reach and revival. This is what we, 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 we are, are living, experiencing even as we speak. Worsening threats and bans and boycotts against Christian and churches, but worldwide testimonies of blessing and breakthrough and breakthrough and breakthrough until he comes. Now recent studies by very serious and recognized sources estimate that over 50 million Christians are being persecuted for their faith in 2023 around the world. And I'm not speaking about somebody looking at you funny or, or making a joke because you have a Christian bumper sticker on your car. I'm speaking of persecution that are happening as we speak. As we speak, Christians are being arrested, they're being tortured, they're being imprisoned and killed. Churches are shut down and burned down. I'm not going to name the country, but I was on a Zoom uh, call uh, last week uh, with a pastor and a group of pastors I know so well. And they ministered for years and years. And in one, one city, they had built 35 uh, uh, churches. All 35 churches have been shut down, new government. And, and, and they shut down the churches, burned down some of the churches. And all 35 pastors are accused right now. They're in... 
they're, they're on trial right now for blasphemy. So every, every in, in countries around the world are pressures and they, and they are they're human pressures and religious pressures and, and radical pressures to try to silence the voice of the gospel. But I will shout it, please hear me today and let it, let it fill your heart and mind. Nothing and no one will stop or silence the gospel of Jesus Christ. This gospel, hallelujah, this gospel will be preached around the world and then the end will come. So from the kingdom of God and the nations to you, to your home, to your life, to your family, your battles and your heart and mind, we all face pressure and we will all face some form of persecution. So I want to look at, at you in the book of Acts chapter 4, in our chapter, at four dynamics of Acts 4 to overcome uh, through, to be overcomers through pressure and persecution. Uh, dynamics in this, uh, the definition uh, in a sense of a force pro processes that produces change. Behavioral principles and understandings and actions that at the critical point will be crucial. I believe that the Word of God will equip us, will teach us, will equip us and strengthen us to be overcomers through present pressure and future persecutions. So we look, we look at the first dynamic, is a dynamic of keeping, uh, I would call it a dynamic of keeping our Savior and salvation as our absolute focus. Acts chapter 4, and we read from verse 5. And it came to pass on the next day that the ruler, elders, and scribes, as well as Anas, the high priest, and Ca Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together in Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? It speaks of the miracle of the man who was healed, the lame man who was healed at the gate, at the door of the temple 40 years. And they all saw his miraculous healing. And they say, by what, what power, what name have you done this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what, mean he has made, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you and all of the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you've crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by your builders, which has become. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven by we, among them by which we must be saved. Mm. These rulers and elders and Caiaphas and Anas, they, the disciples are now accused by the very court before whom Jesus appeared. After his unlawful arrest and crucifixion. It is the way of Christ. They're following in the footsteps of Jesus. They are standing with all of the legal, religious, judiciary, political. And we must realize and discern all the powers of darkness aligned through these men against them. They are arrested, thrown in prison all night. And they are set in the midst of. They're surrounded. And, some, and, some, and in each, each of us at some moments in our life, and some of you today online and in person, that's how you feel. You feel you're in the midst of, you've been thrown into something that, is such, that has brought such pressure to your life. The, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sense that you're so surrounded, it's hardly, you can hardly see over. They were, they were surrounded, they were put in the midst of, and re, really in physicality what it meant, uh, they were put in, a, it was a, a circle Historians tell us that that Sanhedrin was a, a circle of 70 members of the Sanhedrin. But it was the seat of all these men at, at, at all powers. The seat of all human power and authority. Like the House of Representatives, Chamber of the United States, Capitol, and the Supreme Court of their day. With the power of law, sentencing, imprisonment, and life and death over them. And I love 
the way. I love how Peter and John, I love John, Peter and John's first response. Please, please receive it because the scripture specifies that it, is, it was inspired of the Holy Spirit as our model. We must return and hold on to today and tomorrow. In days of pressure, in days of persecution, the dynamic of keeping our Savior and salvation as our absolute focus. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, this is how he answers. Since we appear before you to be judged for a healing miracle, a good deed done to raise up a helpless man. Since you are asking by what means he has been made well, let it be known to all. You know how he's answering? He's answering with, let me tell you about what Jesus does. Yeah, not, involved, not, not letting him be sidetracked by anything else. Since you, you're seeing a miracle of a transformed life and of a healed life, and you're asking by what you mean, let me tell you, let me tell all of you what Jesus does in people's lives. Now in times of persecution... We must, as believers, in person, in your home, in your family, online, and all the preachers and ministers that are listening to, to, this podcast, to this broadcast, to this message, all over the world, please they're, they're, notice that their focus was not on political issues. It was not on re religious uh, uh, controversies. They're not, they're not uh, uh, on issues or parties or coming elections or destitutions. They're not on vaccine or against vaccine. They're not, on they're not filled with denouncing and accusing with rage and anger, the anti-God, immorality, and social issues, extremism surrounding them on all sides. No, their answer was, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you about Jesus changing lives. Say, Yes, please. They overcame by the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, and the word of their testimonies. That is our word. That is our message. That, that's how you, well, the people of God are made it through all persecution. We stay focused. We are proclaiming what Jesus still does. How peace with God through Christ will bring the peace of God in Christ. We must focus on what the gospel and salvation has brought forth, not only in individuals, millions, hundreds of millions of individuals, but also literally to civilizations throughout history. That what Christians, what the, what the message of Christ has done in changing history. Let it be known to you all. And to all people, uh, how the helpless, the poor, the, or the orphan, the refuge, and the widows have been helped through history by our Savior and our salvation in imparting to the followers of Christ throughout history the unfailing love and heart of compassion of God. This is how Christians, this is how Christians have, shine, have shined throughout history. Please understand, this is why you, you, we, we, have to, we have to be wise and have that, that discernment of not engaging in endless debate with people that do not know the Lord. Because the Bible says when, I did not, when we didn't know God, but we weren't saved, when we weren't born again, we had a veil over our eyes. We were blinded, complete. Do you remember when you were like that? You're completely blinded. But when you come to faith, God and Jesus uh, opens your eyes. I was blind. We sang it today. Uh, he, he, he takes away the veil. And then we begin to see people and we begin to love people the way Jesus sees people and love people. And every day as you grow in Christ, God takes away the heart of stone and he gives you a heart of flesh, a heart of compassion, a heart of generosity, a heart of forgiveness. Say yes at any time you like. A heart of forgiveness. And that is how the gospel shines. Say yes, please. I love the testimony of, uh, of a, a man named Brian Stewart. Brian Stewart is like a, is an, one of the most well-known anchormen. He, he, he did the news every night for years and years in Canada. Highly decorated, uh, esteemed Canadian news anchorman. He's a journalist and author. And, on, and he wrote on his experiences uh, uh, as a CBC, which is a Canadian broadcasting um, company, uh, television network, yeah, as a correspondent around the world. And he was making, he was doing, a, I'm reading a, a portion of a speech He's a Canadian journalist, host of CBC News, and uh, he was a correspondent for The National, which is the one of the most watched uh, show in Canada. And he delivered the back-to-school speech at Knox College in Toronto. And the title of his speech was, Christians Everywhere Are on the Front Line. And he, he, he spoke very candidly and said, I'm reading a portion of his, of his speech. During the early years of my career, I had embraced the idea 
widespread in many circles and certainly including the media, he says, that the church more often than not was no longer relevant and merely existed as an, un as an undrinkable blob of contemporary life. I was an agnostic and different to the meaninglessness of religion. On the other hand, whenever I was sent to cover a situation of war, famine, earthquake, devastating hurricane, in fact, any calamity affecting human life, I found Christians there already at work, generously and charitably helping people in need, long before I and my camera crew arrived on the scene. And I was quickly struck by this simple reality. Then he tells a, an anecdote when they, he, he, they, they flew into Bosnia in the midst of a horrible uh, war and genocide. And he says, and we were welcomed there by, by a pastor and, and with, uh, with him a team of courageous Christian helpers uh, helping 24 hours a day in the most horrendous condition. We were welcomed, and, and after a while, my veteran cameraman later cited in exasperation, couldn't you take us to some news location anywhere where these Christians weren't there before us? And he says, I've never been able to. And this is his testimony, and that is why I opened my heart and mind to personal faith and salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Brian Stewart Close this speech with his, with his, the, his speech to these graduates with these words. These Christians are on the front line of all the world's disasters and worst places of suffering and injustice. And when I want to find out where the front line is, I follow in the footsteps of the Christians as they have been following in the footsteps of Jesus amid persecution and discrimination for 2,000 years. Argue less online, argue less on social issue, and preach Jesus, live Jesus, love like Jesus, serve like Jesus. Say yes, please. Uh, read it again. There's no, 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 verse 12, nor there is salvation in any other name, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. We must be intentional and inexhaustible in proclaiming that there is no other name under heaven giving among men by which we must be saved. We must preach and live out the inclusiveness of Jesus. All men, God so loved the world, one name by which all men may be saved. Whosoever will may come. We sang it so beautifully, and this is what we are to be speaking about, and this is what we are to be proclaiming. You can come to the Father, the open arms of God for all men, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter how bad you think you've been, you can come. He, all inclusive, the inclusion of God, all whosoever will may come. Say yes, please. We must preach the inclusiveness, but then we must never neglect or shy away from the exclusiveness. Not only is there no limitation to a salvation, there's no substitution. There is no other way. There's no other path between God, uh, between God and men. You, there's no religion. There's no other uh, religion or uh, religious exercise. There's no. There's only one. It's not. It, it's not in any religious thing coming from you. It is only through the the, the name and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, you may must be born again. We preach his inclusion, but we preach his exclusion. There's no other path. No other way. One name. That is why we. There's no other name lifted up in this church. We don't lift up a name of an organization or denomination, or, or a man, or a speaker, or a superstar, or a hero. No, one name. No other name lifted up, sang, praised, proclaimed, and preached by the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Four dynamics to overcome uh, in, through persecution. The first one is the dynamic of keeping our Savior and salvation as our absolute focus. The second one is the dynamic of, of a spiritual family. It's so beautiful in Acts chapter 4, all this persecution, these pressures. And when, and in verse 21, and when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. For the man was over 40 years old on, on whom this miracle of healing had been performed, Acts 3. And being let go, they went, this is the phrase, don't miss it. And being let go, they went to their own companions. 
and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. And when they heard that whole group, one body, one member suffered, we suffered together. One member uh, weeps, we weep with them. One member battles, we battle with you. And when they heard, they heard that, they, they raised their voice to God in one accord saying, Lord, you are God. This is such an amazing key. They went to their own companions, to their brothers, to their sisters, to the family of God. For 2,000 years, the devil has been succeeding at deceiving and detracting Christians from the truth that we need to come together. We need to come together as a body, the church, the assembly, the gathering, the coming together. The author of the books of Hebrew already warned against the lie of deconstructing church. Uh, and making it a spectator, a spectator sport. That, uh, uh, and, he, uh, and he's underlining a lie that has raised up its ugly head and its venomous poison uh, following the, the COVID. All, all the, uh, those that are, uh, all the statistics coming up are showing that 40% of Christians have uh, left that during the COVID when the church's doors were closed, never came back. 40%. Never came back, are now watching. Sometimes people in my church, they, they think that they're, they're making me happy. They say, oh yeah, I watched you, Pastor Cole. I watched you last Sunday when I was washing my car. You know that kind of watching? <laughs> say to somebody next to you, it's not the same. <laughs> Please understand, I so believe that God, that God is using the ministry online. This is to reach the multitude. It is so, uh, the, God, I thank God for the message to the multitudes online. This is God, God anointed and God is using pulpits like this one to touch, to minister to, to multitudes around the world. But it can never replace the ministry to one another. Of coming together and of praying together. Now, the author to the Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 10, I'm just going to read some portions. Uh, in Hebrews 10, there's this, this, this verse at the heart of uh, Hebrews 10. He says, do not, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves uh, together as is the, the matter of some. And then you could, I'm giving the, you a, a homework. Just please, please read this at home and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. You're watching online. And thank God for online. But uh, Hebrews 10 gives us uh, uh, everything that, uh, that takes place when we come together. Verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart. We draw near together in full assistance of faith. Uh, uh, having our hearts purified from evil, an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. There, there's a, listen to me, there's an integrity. There's a, a purity, a sanctification, an accountability to holiness only fine when we come together sense of provoking each other to good works. Let us, let us uh, hold fast at a confession without, of hope without wavering. Verse 23 of, of Hebrews 10. For he who made the promise is faithful. There's a level of encouragement and strengthening of our faith that is only found as Christians come together and pray together. And, 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 and uh, support each other and serve together and join a group together and, and begin to do ministry together and pray and sing together and worship together and cry together and laugh together and pray. To Say yes, please. And he says, he says that, let no one, not, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the matter of some. And he says, uh, uh, even more, uh, uh, as the day, even more, uh, so much more as you can see the day approaching. He's speaking of the last days. He says prophetically, yet a little while and he who is coming, Jesus, will come and will not tarry. And he, sa he, he says, now the just shall live by faith, yes. But, uh, but, it, but if anyone draws back, God says, my soul has no pleasure in them. But we are not of those that draw back to perdition. We are of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Say yes, please. Come, they're, coming, they're coming together. I want, I want you to say this to the person next to you. Smile to the person next to you and say to them, I need you. Say that to somebody next to you. Don't say anything else, just say that. Come back to me. <laughs> now say to the same person, you need me. Now can we say, can we say out, li out loud together, can we say out loud together, I need the church. I need the church. 
Can you say out loud, the church needs me? Now you're here. I'm not beating on you. You're here. You're in the building. You made it through the New York Marathon to be here in the rain and wherever else. But let, let's speak together to everybody online. We bless you if you're online, but we have a message for you. All of us together, would you shout it out to everybody online? Would you shout out, you need the church? You need the church. And can you say to everyone online, the church needs you? The church needs you. And can we give God praise for his perfect purposes? His purposes for his body. Hallelujah. And every, from, from philosophers to sociologists to the latest research and data and mental health studies, they all confirm what God knew from the beginning of creation. It is not good for man to be alone. We need one another. It's fascinating how some, some philosophers from ancient days that anyone that studied the human need, the human condition, would, would come out with, with declarations of how much we need one another. I, I came across this, this, uh, this quote uh, from Plato. The, this is five, six hundred years before Christ. The Greek philosopher said this. It's this amazing phrase. I'm giving you a warning. Sometimes I'm hit by, by quotes like that and they just, wow, I find them amazing. And I come to my church on Sunday and I throw it out there and I get... Stone face, nobody gets it. So please, would you please at least fake it? I'm going to give you the quote in a, in a second. <laughs> this is the quote. Be kind. Every person you meet is fighting a difficult battle. I don't know if this is sincere or not. I'm not sure. 600 years before Christ, Plato says, you don't know what the person next to you is going through. There's a place on earth of kindness. The fruit of the Spirit is kindness and patience and meekness and love. There's a place that God purposed to be on the earth. There's a people that God purposed to be on the earth that will be the people of kindness. The people that will welcome. The people of forgiveness. The people that come together. And wherever you go through, this is the place where they love you. And they honor you. And they respect you. And they lift you up. And they, we pray together. And we, we weep together. And we laugh together. And we battle together. And then we shout together. And we walk together until Jesus comes. Say yes, please. There's a dynamic, uh, this is how you overcome through pressure and persecution, the dynamic of keeping our Savior and salvation is our focus, the dynamic of a spiritual family. Thirdly, the dynamic of his sovereignty, strengthening our faith and our fire. Same uh, chapter, chapter 4, this is how they prayed, verse 24. And when they heard, when they heard that, they lifted their voices to God with one accord and said, Lord, Watch that. Lord, you are God who made heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. And then they start to quote the Old Testament, the, the, the Psalms. And who by the mouth of your servant David said, why did the nations rage? This is what's happening all around us. Nations raging. And the people plot vain things. The kings of the earth took their stand. And the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. The prophetic words hundreds of years before was, was prophesying, announcing what was happening in Acts chapter 4. Where they all got against them. For verse 27. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed both Herod, Pontius Pilate, most powerful men of their day, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel. They all gathered together to do, watch this, don't miss it, to do whatever his hand. Whatever your hand and your purposes determine before to be done. They prayed. This is, a, this is something that you mu we must uh, uh, get a hold. We pray when we are going through pressures and the world around us is spinning and, and no one knows what's going to happen next and, and fear grips the heart of everyone around us. People think nobody knows what's going to happen. Nobody knows what to do. But their response in prayer was deeply rooted in the alpha and omega of God's sovereignty. God is all knowledge, all power, all authority over all things, all men, all nations, and all generations. They quote the Psalms of the Old Testament that, that, that announce and prophesy uh, everything that happened in Christ. His birth, his life, his death, his resurrection. And now how his, the, his body on earth would move and, and men would gather against them. But as all that is happening, they are praying and they're using a very important, they, they're saying Lord three times. 
Three times they will say Lord in their prayer. Verse 44, uh, uh, 24, 27, and 28. But they're not using the common word that is most uh, found in the New Testament. In the Greek, when you see Lord, it's kurios. But in this moment, they use the word despotes. We get the word despot, despot from it. It speaks of an absolute ruler. Ruler who reigns, governs with ab total power, with unlimited power and authority. And it's often used by men, by, by human despots, with, uh, unfairly and, to, and, and cruelly. But they come, and in this chapter, there's many rulers. Their, their name, Pilate and, and Pospilate, and Herod and others, and the, and the chief of this and the chief of that. But there was something in their prayer. They are rooted at that moment. He's not just Lord in a term of, you're my Lord. He is also, they, they're reminding their own hearts that he's in charge. He's in control. All of this is happening, but it's not going to dwarf. It's not going to stop God's hand and purposes. Please understand. Please understand, we sang beautifully today. It was so beautiful. We sang of, the fa of God our Father. Romans chapter 8, Abba, Father. And it was, it was affectionate word for Father. It was like Daddy. Uh, and and, and I, I love that we come to the Father. And, and this is what you have to lay hold of when you're going through pressures. He's my Father of love, but He's also the ruler of all things. He's also, there's no, there's nothing happening anywhere in the world right now that is out of his sovereign hand. And his hand is upon your life as well. So we pray. So they pray. So you, you are, the, they said, oh God, you're the only Lord despotess. So you need to learn to pray. Maybe you prayed often, our Heavenly Father, we come before you today. That's good. Or you say, oh Lord, kurios. That's good. But you need to pray, our Heavenly despotess. Oh my God, ruler of all things, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No tongue that is raised, no kings, no media, no conspiracy, no government, no armies. I can, no, no one is out of your hand and your purposes will be fulfilled on the earth and in my life in Jesus' name. And lastly, lastly, there's the dynamic of his sovereign Sovereignty strengthening our faith. But lastly, the dynamic of his supernatural favor. Verse 29 to 31, last verses we'll read. So now, Lord, to look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out, by stretching out your hand to heal and the signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, we're going to have an Acts 4 moment uh, just in a few seconds, a few minutes. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled. They were filled in Acts chapter 2. But this is baptismos. This is filled again to overwhelm. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. This is, the last, this is the last dynamic in your life. You, you keep your Savior and salvation as your absolute focus. The dynamic of the spiritual family, they came to their own and prayed together. The dynamic of his sovereignty, strengthening our faith and our fire. Nothing is out of, uh, of your hand, your sovereign hand. You're the, you, you are the despotess, you're the God of all, all power. But then the dynamic of his supernatural favor. Do you remember how we read at the beginning how this chapter on persecution begins? It begins with the Sad Sadducees laying their hands on them. And beyond the, hand, the hands of men, the hands of evil, beyond the hands of discouragement or of, of, of any weapon, any, anything that came against you. It started with the hands of men upon them. And maybe that's how you feel. Sometimes we feel, that's how we feel we are today. There's a hand of discouragement or a fear or pressure, a pain of trauma, of depression over me. But we pray, we pray for the hand of God's sovereignty upon us, but we also pray for the hand of the supernatural hand of God to come upon us, stretched out your hand to heal with signs and wonders and fill us with the Holy Spirit. No matter, I want to say this before we close, I'm going to ask the musicians to come. Before, be, I want to say this this way, whatever chapter 4 of pressure and persecution you are, you, you are in right now, God, God's hand is writing your chapter 5. God's hand is writing the next chapter. 
next chapter, the work of God continued and, and believers were increasingly added, chapter 5. The Lord multitudes of both men and, and women. So, he said, so somebody would say, oh, I've been watching uh, some preachers online. and is that, Does that mean that if we're so filled with God and, and we have revival and we're so favored of God that, that so many teach online that, that then everything will just be perfect in our lives and we'll, uh, we'll be the head and not the tail and, we'll be the, and, and everybody will love us and we'll go, uh, does that mean that? And nobody will ever come. Uh, is that what it means? Say out loud with me, No. This is chapter 5. This is chapter 5. God moved and, and believers were increasingly and the Lord was heading and the hand of God was moving with signs and wonders and, and healings and that's still, that hand is still outstretched for us today. But this is chapter 5 too. Until Jesus comes, then the high priest rose up and all of those, verse 17, all of those were with him. Again, the sect of the Sadducees and they're still filled with indignation and they still try to lay their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, go, stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. This is our stand. This is what, this is where we are going to be. This is who we are. Not only at the door of this temple, but in your home and in your family and online and in your place of work and with your friends and with people that have drifted away from the things of God and people around you that if you allow the Holy Spirit to use you are, are, are desperate around you. And even when the opposition is coming and the, the pressures are coming and the persecution and the despising at some level, you, there's a tendency in our humanity for the church to shrink and stay among ourselves and just wait till Jesus comes. But no, we will stand at the door of the temple announcing the life that Jesus gives until he comes. I'm privileged to have been able to bring the word in many, many uh, countries. I'm not going to name them. In many, many countries where the, I, we ministered uh, to pastors and leaders that were under crazy, insane, cruel persecution from churches burned down to pastors being in prison. I remember in one, one conference, the pastor next to me had fingers cut off and he was lifting his hands and I asked, what, what, how, is that? they said, well, that's what was part of the torture. He was two years in prison and, we're, and he's got his, his, his one hand with his fingers cut off, raised and raised to God. And, and we, 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 everywhere we've been in a country is, uh, where the persecution is so intense against them, there's something in these men, when, when the, 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 the leaders come together, every time I, I just weep. Because every time when they come together, you feel they're filled with peace. Some of the most joyous meetings I've been in are in countries where the persecution is so, so nasty. But the spirit of God in them and the joy of the Lord and the presence of Jesus in them. Oh, So, so, so we were in, in Bangladesh and, and some of the... But the gathering brought people from different countries where, where the persecution right in our day was, was, was horrible. And, and at the end of one service, the pastor brought me to, brought a young man to me. And there will be a picture that will appear. Uh, of, uh, I, I took a picture with him. I was so blessed by his testimony. He, um, and the pastor told me, this young man, through an interpreter, of course. And, and through interpreting, he, he says, this young man was our, one of our young pastors at a small church in, a, in his village. But also a center, like a teen challenge center for drug addicts. And he said, recently, the radicals came in his village. They burned all kinds of things. And they were, they were gunning for him. So they burned his little building. And they grabbed him and beat him in, in, in the square in the center of town. And they took a gun and they shot him in the face. They shot him on the side of the face. And when he turned, you could see all the, the scars. And they left him for dead. They left him in a pool of blood, left him for dead. And they, they burned things and they left. And then, and then he, they, they, they came after, they, they regrouped around him and they found that he was still alive, still breathing. So they took him to, 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 a, to a hospital. He was in a coma for a lot. Then he came back. And, 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 and now he's there at the conference telling me this, this testimony. So I'm, I'm hugging him. And I said, can I take a picture with you? And God bless you. And I, so I'm asking him a question. I said, well, they, they burned your place and they shot you in the face. So what do you do now? Where, where did you go? And, and the pastor, when I said, ask him that, the pastor is looking at me like, I doesn't, doesn't understand my question. So I said, well, you got shot in the face, burnt and beat to death. And so wh 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 what did you do now? Where, where, where did you live? What do you do? Where, do you, where, where did you go? And uh, they, so the pastor's looking and, and, and ask him, the, tells him the question. 
The young man answers, doesn't seem to understand my question, but he says in the, in the simplest, most impacting words that have stayed with me, he said, he said, well, I went back to the same place. I'm back in my building. I, I, they, they put up a tent. I'm back ministering, serving. This is my people. I'm a servant of Jesus. And I know poets and artists write these amazing lyrics, but he, he said these words through the interpreter. Maybe he wasn't even that exact, but, but through the, and it stayed with me, and I've prayed this so many times after 40 years of ministry. That young man said, try to explain to me how simple it was and how natural and then how there's nothing else he could do. So he s smiled and he said, well, you know, Jesus died for me, so I'm just trying to live for him. So can we stand together and can we say Jesus died for us and now we will live for him. We will stand at the temple's gate and announce his life until he come. Would you shout a last amen? Would you give him praise as we close tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want us to sing in a few minutes. I want us in a few seconds. I want us to pray a song. I want you to bow your head with me. And online, stay with us. This is a moment before God. There's a, sol a solemn, solemn moment before the Lord. We will sing, we will declare our faith. Christ is my firm foundation. When all around me is shaken, He'll never let me go. He won't. But today we stand before you, O oh God. And if you're here today, my brothers, my sister, online, you can pray with us. If you're here and you say, Oh God, I want to stand for you and announce your word of life. I will confess today that my focus had gone on many other things. And beloved, please know, I understand. We can watch the news and we can see the evil and we can see the antichrist and we can see the, just, just the mockery of God's word and like, like a whole part of our world is, 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 seems to be running to, to trample the, God's commandment and God's law and God's presence. And, and, and we could get so involved in that. And we could be, and I see hundreds of thousands of Christians online so involved in that. Would you stand with me and say, lift your hand and say, Jesus, I want to come back to you. Yes. I want to start debating and stuff. I want to announce who you are. I want to announce what you do. Yeah. Since you must know why I've been healed. Since you must know why this helpless man was saved and delivered and healed. Let all, all nations know that there is Jesus. This is he. This is he we love and we serve. You're here today and you say, oh, Pastor, his message was for me. I have been in a season of pressure. But today I lift my hands to him. Today we are having a, we will enter into a moment of Acts chapter 4 where we all raise our voices together. And yes, I will call because it will make such a difference in your life. And listen to me online, it will make a difference in your children's yes. life. Thank you. When parents stop going to church because they can watch it online whenever, it's very rare that they communicate a strong faith to their kids and grandkids. So for yourself and for your family, it is time for you to say, I'm coming back to the house of God. I'm, I want to be part of the body. I want to, I, I am not of those who will slip away. I want to be part of the body. I want to love together and pray together and, and battle together and weep together and laugh together and celebrate together and, and, and serve together until he comes in his house. And oh my God, I've been filled with your spirit, but today I need to be filled again. We need to be filled again, oh God. So would you lift your hands? Would you lift your hands? And as Ricardo and the team leads us, this is not just a song. This is a moment of Acts chapter 4. Hallelujah. And I, and I know this is a, uh, we're in a public meeting, and, and I understand. I don't want you to do this if you don't know the person, but I feel a, for a moment of praying for one another. This is why we are here in church. So men with men and women with women, would you just put your hand on somebody's shoulder if you know them around you. And just for a few minutes as a musician, just, just psalms of spontaneous worship going up to God. Would you begin to pray over each other? Would you begin to speak words of life? You don't know what the person next to you is going through. You don't know what they've been battling. Be kind. Be kind. 
everyone you meet is facing a greater battle. Be kind. Oh God, I need, fill me with your kindness and fill me with your word and fill me with your compassion and the meekness and the love of God. Oh Lord, spread, pour out your love in our hearts. And for a few minutes as the, wor as the worshipers are just psalming before God, singing psalms, spontaneous psalms to pray before the Lord. Pray for one another. And Lord, we pray with our, our friends online. We pray for brothers and sisters online. Wherever they are in the U.S., wherever they are around the world, they're in Africa and they're in Europe and they're in Norway and they're in Sweden and they're in Italy and they're in Spain. Oh God, wherever they are, and they're in Israel and they're in Gaza and they're in Haiti and they're in Ukraine. Oh God, wherever they are, and they're in India. Oh God, wherever they are, reach out. We from New York City, we lift our voices to you. From New York City, we intercede. No, oh, whenever they see this moment, this moment of Acts chapter 4, we lift up our voices together and we pray, oh God, that we, you would stretch out your hand, stretch out your hand in healing and sign and wonders be done in the wonderful name of Jesus. And we declare that your hand holds all things, that you are our strong foundation and you'll never let us go. You won't. You won't. Yes. Rains will come. Winds will blow. Yes. But you'll never live, never leave us nor forsake us. Come on, people of God, worship Him for a moment. Lift your voice. Acts chapter 4. A thousand voices going up to God together. Hallelujah.